What's up, chat? What's up, YouTube viewership? This is the Needed Podcast, episode 15. Oh, no, I'm on 14. Yeah, episode 14. You know, I'm at home today. My boys are actually out of town nursery gaming. I believe is in Denver to open up their big Denver location. So if any of you guys are in the Denver area and want some type of land activity or esports activity, man, definitely nursery was definitely going to hold you guys down. They're opening a huge arena in downtown Denver, I believe. So most of my boys are out there this weekend. Or this week and this weekend, that's what they're doing. So they told me just go ahead and do the show from home. And it's a lot of stuff to talk about. Obviously, the first thing we gotta talk about is the the championship games, man. The championship games were crazy. From top to bottom, everything about them was pretty dope. I mean, as far as football goes, that was pretty much as good as we're gonna get. As football is concerned, I mean the divisional round was really, really, really weak. Other than the Eagles game, the Eagles game was pretty good. But the rest of the divisional round was really bad. and um, But they made up for it in the championship round, two Amazing football games. Um, the Saints, the Saints, obviously, I didn't think anybody would beat the Saints at home. If you watched the podcast last week, if you watched it on YouTube, man, it is on YouTube. You could check out episode 13 where I predicted these games. I thought the Saints would win. I think the Saints are really hard to beat at home. I think that's, you know, their calling card is at home field advantage. And for them not to uh, come up with that victory was really disappointing for them. Obviously, the call at the end had a lot to do with it. But I felt like in the second half, uh, the first half, obviously, Wade Phillips is the defensive coordinator of the Rams. And he did a great job taking away Michael Thomas the entire game. But in the first half, Drew Brees was killing him with Alvin Kamara because you can't really cover him. But in the second half, he really used his defensive lineman. Just instead of going after the passer, man, if the running back was on your side, you got to chip the runner. You got to hit the hell out of the running back. And that really disrupted what Drew Brees wanted to do. And that came down to the end. And we'll talk about that at the end of that game. And some things that I would do differently as a Madden player in those games. And, you know, it's pretty much, obviously, it all came down to that big call at the end. That was crazy bad that they missed that call. But when I'm looking at that game, the main thing that I'm looking at, uh, the main thing that I'm looking at in that game was just what the Saints were going to do. After they caught, I'll show you guys right now, man. They caught like a Hail Mary. They, Drew Brees, I thought Drew Brees play, played one of his worst games in a long time in this game. And um, it really came down to, you know, that big call was huge. But I'll show you what I would have did personally if I was given the opportunity that the Saints were given to go ahead and make this stop. And that's not where I want to be. I want to be right here. Boom. And I'll show you guys, essentially... No, I didn't want to move this. God damn it, W. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, so this is what's going to happen, man. You see the score of the game is 20 to 20 right now. So, and obviously right now the Saints have a third and two. They're not in field goal range. I believe this is a pass underneath where he just hits Alvin Kamara and he stays in bounds. You see him circling him there. And you see the, the the linebacker was on him all day. And you see they bumped the hell out of him, threw him on the ground almost to where he gets up and then he gets into the flat. And what he does here, which is brilliant, is he stays in bounds. Because he stays in bounds, that's going to run 40 seconds off this clock. So they're pretty much milking this out for the rest of the game. That was really smart of Kamara to get out of bounds or stay in bounds to run this 40 seconds off the clock, man. That was huge. And a lot of players don't do that. Unless they're losing the game, but to be in a tie game and run the clock out, that's huge. But like I said, this is what they did in the second half. Like you just beat the hell out of Kamara. <laughs> it's to the point where sometimes the delay route Madden gets hung up and you don't even remember it's there and then pops out and nobody's guarding them. Gets that huge first down on, on third and two. So now we see where we get. Oh, uh, is this where he chucked the ball up? Let me see. Second and twelve. So obviously, if I if I were in this situation. After that play, I, I'm thinking like, maybe I can run right here and get it to the two-minute warning. And I think that's, I believe that's what the Saints do do is run the ball. Now, you're not in field goal range yet, but you're in a position. Aaron Donald's just the best defensive player in football. But you're in a position in this part of the field to where you can hit a pa any pass, any decent-sized pass is going to give you a field goal range, really. So as long as you're in striking distance for field goal range, you've got to milk the clock. And on top of that, you got to milk the clock. So, okay, damn, what if we don't get this and we got to punt the ball? You know, you essentially want this drive to be the last drive of the game, regardless. Or one or the other, the Rams, and the Rams only have two timeouts. And that that's pretty much a point where they killed themselves wasting the timeout. That's why timeouts are so valuable, both in Madden but in real life. 
And now you have a, a slight difference between the play clock and the two-minute warning. So you can pass the ball here because it's going to stop regardless of time. And this is just probably the play of the game for the Saints. He just lobs it up. My man could pick it, but he just gets mossed by Ted Ginn. That's the two-minute warning. So right there, you're thinking, I'm thinking the game is over, regardless. After the catch like that to put you in clear, easy field goal range, the game is over. And I actually, if you guys follow me on Twitter, man, I, I said, uh, for me personally, I wouldn't run pass here. You know, I would just run three times and take the time down to like 50 seconds and no timeouts. It's not an overly high scoring game. It's actually pretty pretty low scoring for these two teams, man, especially since the first game they won or they played earlier in the season. So, I mean, you got to take that into account that the, the, the wide receivers and quarterbacks really not going down the field that easily. Obviously, I mean, you don't want to give a quarterback any time. But if you're going to give a quarterback time, man, golf is not Tom Brady. Golf is not Joe Montana. He's Jared Goff. They have 20 points in this game. And honestly, this is where the game right here, I think, was lost for the Saints. Because you had, they throw a pass here. Now, if you're going to pass first down, probably the easiest down to pass. And you want to hit Thomas there. And he actually, it was such a low pass there that he dropped it or it hit the ground. And one that stopped the clock for the Rams. So now they don't have to use the get into these timeouts at all because the clock stopped. Sean Payton outsmarts him. Sean Payton always wants to be the smartest person in the room. And right there, honestly, I, like I said, I would have ran three times and put the game on Jared Goff with 50 seconds and no timeouts. But he decided to pass. That was really a high percentage pass. It wasn't a low percentage play. Like, obviously, if Drew Brees makes a good pass there, Michael Thomas catches it, probably gets six, seven, eight yards, shoot, and then it's an even better position. But... Like they said, man, when you drop back the pass, man, bad things can happen, and Drew Brees was inaccurate, so they got it in completion. And now they have to waste the timeout because Taysom Hill doesn't know where he's going. This is a spot in the game where I would it, – it, it's not rocket science to me personally. I'm just running the ball three times, almost run plays that take the most time off the clock because all of that matters right now. Oh, this is the play they run. They run a little pitch here, and Kamara got to stay in bounds. They do a good job swarming and tackling them. And then we get to uh, third down. Oh, we missed it. All right, let's go back. Third and 10. Obviously, because you pass on first down, you kind of almost have to pass now because you you lose that opportunity to take the, the extra time off the clock that you normally would. And, you know, if you ran three times, you would take this under a minute. But because they didn't run, they got to run this play. And that's just a good hit right there by uh, Roby Coleman. Good hit right there. I like it. But honestly, if that's called right there, it's first down inside the 10. The Rams have one timeout left. If that's called, what happens is a first and, ten, first and goal. The Rams have a timeout left. They run, they call a timeout. It would knock it down to probably 20 seconds left instead of 50 seconds. So if the, if the Saints would have just ran the ball, if the Saints would just run the ball out, and, and take their three, it would have been around 50 seconds. If they call that penalty because of the way the Saints played, if they call that penalty, they probably would have given the Rams 20, 15 seconds like that. So definitely if they call the penalty, the game is pretty much over. The game is pretty much cooked. But because they gave themselves the opportunity to, you know, to get the Rams the ball back, I, I personally would have ran the ball three times, played it super safe in a 20-20 to 20 ball game against an inexperienced playoff quarterback. I would have ran the ball three times. That's what I would have did. But, you know, everybody has their own uh, way to go. And if Drew Brees hits that little quick baby pass, you know, they're probably winning the game anyway. But he was inaccurate with that pass. Honestly, this one, that's a penalty, could have been a pick six, but it wasn't. So that's just how, they, that's just how that game went. That's the biggest thing I would have did differently in that game if I was the Saints. As soon as Ted Ginn caught that pass, I would have went ahead and uh, just ran three times, take it to 50 seconds on the clock, kick my easy field goal, kick the ball off to Rams, give them 50 seconds and no timeouts to try to get in field goal range. That's what I would have did, but the Saints chose to be aggressive. One completed pass there, they probably win, but Drew Brees didn't get done. Obviously, with the call, they probably win too. But that's just an example of something I would have did a little bit differently. The next game is, is Tom Brady. I mean, Tom Brady, I don't think, I, I, and I made another comment that I don't think he's the best quarterback ever. I think when do we start talking about he's the best athlete of all time? In any sport, in any any field of athletics, I mean, Tom Brady continually just 
makes makes things happen every time his back goes up against the wall, every time he needs to get a drive, every time he needs to move the ball, every time he needs to, you know, do something with the Patriots, whether it's, it's at home most of the time, it's in the Super Bowl. This time it's in Kansas City, which I said is probably the third toughest place to play in the nation. I mean, I put the Seattle probably number one. Then I'd put New Orleans number two. Then I'd probably go Arrowhead, man. Arrowhead is really a tough place to play. Playing against a good team. Great offensive team. So the Patriots really had a good game plan to run the ball. And honestly, one thing that's underrated for the Patriots really is the way their offensive line's been playing, man. It's pretty much been unreal. And this guy, Trent Brown at left tackle, man, is like six foot nine. Huge guy. They say he's the biggest player in the NFL, and he's really playing out of his mind. They let Nate Solder go to the Giants, and then this guy Trent Brown's just stepped in and been amazing for him. And they've really been running the ball really well coming up here and uh, down the stretch, and that's what they continue to do against the Chiefs. And it came down to the wire, man. Drives from both teams back and forth, and there's some things here that I would, uh, I would definitely do a little bit differently. And we're gonna show, we're gonna pick up this game right here. It's 24 to 21. The um, Chiefs have the ball, right? The Chiefs have the ball. They're down by three points, right? Okay, so you're down by three points. You're playing against Tom Brady. You're not playing against Jared Goff. See, that type of mindset, you have to I always talk about knowing who your personnel is, knowing who you're playing, and that's pretty much something that has to go into everything that you do, man. And it ties into Madden in the same way as that, you know, if you're playing, you know, Skimbo or Kiv or Go, somebody that's real high power on offense, you got to approach your offense a little bit differently than if you're playing a runner or somebody that's not real high potent. And that's kind of what the difference between the Rams and the Patriots are, man. You don't want to give the ball back to Brady with time on the clock. You're kind of okay giving it back to golf with time on the clock, man. You have to know your personnel. It affects the way you play. And if I'm if I am the Kansas City Chiefs, I don't want Brady to touch the ball again. Because we have a first down right here, and you see they air the ball out. They're on the 40-yard line. I don't know where they are. Look, look at where they are. That's where they air the ball out on first down. Second down, you're pretty much your fringe field goal range. This will be a 57-yard field goal. Obviously, you'd like it a lot closer than that. But what we really need to look at is the time on the clock. That's the biggest deal. And if the game being tied, in my opinion, if you get inside field goal, if you get inside the, the 35, especially inside the 30, I'm trying to take as much of this and as many of these timeouts as I can with me so Tom Brady can't get back on the field. But you'll see right here, they go ahead and pop this, boom, pop this little pick play that should have been called. And it gets tackled inside the five. In my opinion, that's, and then the next play. Now, I think Belichick said, go ahead, let them score. Because these guys, I, I, I don't know if I could slow motion this, but if you watch these guys, man, they just give up. And, and this is an instance, you're on the two-yard line. Obviously, the Patriots are going to get the ball back regardless because after this play is a two-minute warning, then they have three timeouts. The Patriots are going to get the ball back. And it's tough not to take a touchdown, but they walk into the end zone so easy. They leave two minutes and three seconds on the clock, three timeouts for the Patriots. Obviously, you love going up four points. No matter who you're playing, you love it, and uh, it's definitely feels good. And in Madden, we would probably all take the situation being up four points. But it is they did score really quickly from the 50-yard line in in two plays. And here we go, Patterson running the ball out of the end zone. And this is the first play, and this is the drive. So Brady needs a touchdown. He can't kick a field goal. Dot the Edelman, who I said is a Virgil Hall of Fame right now. So he needs a touchdown. So if you're if you're the Chiefs, man, you just you don't got to stop him from getting a field goal range. All you got to do is stop him from getting into the end zone. And all they ran here is just two men under. They got Eric Berry on Gronk. And and Brady just pretty much had his way. Oh, and this was the play that was offside. So we go with a bullet pass to Gronk, bounces off his hands, gets picked off, but D4 was offsides. So, like I said, all, all you have to do is keep them out of the end zone. Now, Madden, a lot of times, this is where you'll get real cautious, especially inside the 20. You'll start dropping eight and nine people in coverage. As you see, D4 was clearly offsides. Maybe we'll go to third and five. They need a touchdown, man. They have all three timeouts. There's a lot of time left in the game, especially to have all three timeouts. He goes with a little loft up there to Gronk. He comes down with it. Boom. Now, I feel like Kansas City has to use a timeout, and they did. First play. 
And I don't know if they told them to score here either, but they score right away. Now, it's another instance where you can't the, you can't really you know, predict that you're going to score a touchdown on second down or third down or so on and so forth, but to score on first down, obviously you'll take it because you needed a touchdown. If you were down three, it's a little bit different because you need to go down and score a touchdown. But even if he gets two yards on that and gets second and goal from the two, the way the Patriots have been running the ball, and you got to be confident in your ability to score inside the five, I think the Patriots would have been better off not scoring on first down, falling down at the one-yard line, especially after the run was that successful to get that many yards. If he would have fell down at the one-yard line and then make them use this timeout, then you get the 30 seconds, man, and then no timeouts or something like that. Or even if they... Then they, like, quarterback sneak, but just for an inch and not really score a touchdown. Then take it all the way down to 10 seconds, and you got third and goal from the inch line with two shots with Brady on a sneak. I think this is where the Patriots really should have not scored right away. You know, as much as, like, real football, you know, people, nothing is given. Even if you're on the inch line with three shots with a quarterback sneak, it's not given with Brady. I understand that. A lot of things could happen, so... But for me personally, I would have fell down a little bit and definitely took a little more time off the clock and definitely would have tried to take this time out from the Chiefs so they had no chance to going down the field and get in the field goal. So they, I mean, the Patriots pretty much went right down the field. They didn't even need to use any of their timeouts, which is crazy. But now you give the Chiefs a, a chance and you see a great play by Mahomes here hitting Spencer Ware out of the backfield and they have that timeout. If they don't have that timeout there, then the clock's down. Now they're down to one play right here, pretty much. But because they had the timeout, they can stop the clock, and they get a roughing the pass, I believe. Beautiful throw by Mahomes right there to get in the field goal range. And what happens is because of the flag, it stops the clock, and they pretty much have all day. Right here, you got to just throw it into the end zone. And that's going to tie the game. But And that's pretty much uh, the big, biggest thing I would have did different, especially for the Patriots. I would have fell down and not scored on first down, especially a Madden man. You want to give your opponent no chance to go ahead and go down the field. And overtime, it is what it is. We all saw overtime. Tom Brady pretty much every third down that he needed went to Julian Edelman. Boom. They could not cover him. This guy, 23, could not cover Julian Edelman. Here you see it again, a little man coverage, a little motion route. Third and ten, first down, every single time. This guy's mad. I mean, here we go. Gronk, slant over the top on Eric Berry, caught it, boom. They went right down the field in overtime, man. This was textbook drive by Tom Brady. And this is why sometimes you don't want to let him get the ball. And we get to second and goal. And the way the offensive line was blocking, if you watch this big goon Trent Brown on this play, he just moves a, a man. He moves a man pretty much in the score, a touchdown, and the game is over, man. So, man, that, that's pretty much the biggest thing I would have did if I was a Patriots. Obviously, they won, so it did not kill them. It did not devastate them, not scoring quickly. But they definitely scored quick, in my opinion. I would have went ahead and uh, fell down a little bit earlier than that, man. That's just how I feel. Like, I, I just, man, it's just different. But it didn't cost them. Things worked out for them. Those were the two instances where I uh, I definitely would have <clears throat> played a little bit different. But, like I said, in real life, everybody wants to they want to take their guaranteed seven. But if I'm playing against Tom Brady, if I'm playing against the, the Chiefs offense, if I'm playing against something where I feel like they can go right down the field, I'm not giving them a chance, man. I, I have confidence in my offense to score if it's second and goal from the two and so on and so forth. And that's definitely... um. Uh, to each his own, you know. Personally, I, I feel like Madden, I'm definitely scoring. I'm definitely falling down. I'm not scoring. In real life, we'll see if some of the stuff like this is ever incorporated into real life. I don't see too many teams not scoring on purpose. But I, I do I do feel like a, both of those teams, especially the Patriots, let the Chiefs score a touchdown, man. I really think they did. And uh, I think more teams need to do that more often is letting teams score. You know, but... There's a lot of pride in real football. They think they can stop it. You never know what could happen. You can get a penalty. You can get, you know, a fumble. They could drop the snap, snap, so on and so forth, man. All right. Now, this is what really happened this week. That was football. Obviously, that was the highlight of the week pretty much for everybody. 
But what also happened behind closed doors where nobody could watch, not even the other people in the tournament, was the Man Club Series, man. We got down to 32 teams, 32 players. We are all the way down to each club. We got the bracket laid out. We got everything ready to go. And we're pretty much, I'm going to introduce something that I'm going to do myself. I'm going to do it with the help from Players Lounge. Obviously, the help from Man Turf. And the help from my guys at Nerd Street Gamers, man. But we're going to do a bracket challenge, man. I'll show you guys the bracket. I got it all laid out. We can go over everybody that won, how they won in a club, what do I expect from them, everything like that, man. But what I'm going to do is we're going to have a challenge. I'm going to print it. I'm going to put this bracket on Twitter after the game. And what I want you to do, whether it's copy it, but you know, put it on your phone, print it, write it out, whatever it may be, fill this out, take a picture of it, and put it below that tweet. And that's how I'm going to find out who's going to win. I'm going to give you one point for every game you get right. If there's a tie, the final score will be the, the tiebreaker, essentially. And um, the prize I'm going to give away for this, man, first place is going to get $200 cash. They're going to get $100 players lounge money so if you've never played on players lounge man it's a great opportunity for you to get a start trying to play for money it's a great opportunity to, you know try to improve your madden game and you're going to play for free if you win this because you're going to get a hundred dollars to gamble on players lounge so you can start playing five dollars matches ten dollars matches whatever it may be you can get free money on there to gamble you're going to get free a hundred dollars and get two hundred dollars cash so that's going to be three hundred dollars right off the bat if you're xbox if you're an xbox winner you're going to get team of the year todd Gurley. Boom, that's 800K also. So, and if you're PlayStation, I want to send you $50 to buy your own play uh, man points so you can go ahead and get something for your team. So, pretty much, you're going to win. The winner of this is going to earn $350 worth of things. I'm also going to give $50 a needed gaming store for the top four scores in this. So, so anybody that's top four is going to get $50 to spend in the needed gaming store. Whatever the hell you want to buy, you can go ahead and get it. A couple t shirts here and there. The winner will also get that on top of his $350 worth of stuff. So it's definitely a lot of stuff you can get. Definitely, if you have never played for money on Madden, that's definitely something you can uh, get going with, you know. And, and a lot of people are scared to put their money on. I don't even really like gambling. Even I'm one of the best Madden players in the world, and I'm not the biggest Madden gambler. But if it's free money, you can go ahead and play and definitely become better at the game and really uh, improve your game, honestly. That's what makes you better is playing better competition. So, anyway, so like I said, we did not, we weren't able to see who played, who won these games. I don't know how the, the ones that did get streamed are going to get put out, but I'll show you. This is the bracket. It's all down. It's all pretty much put together already, man. This is pretty, uh, where are we at? All right, here we go. Boom. This is the bracket right here. As you see, we got the AFC East over here, AFC South. The AFC East will play. The AFC South when the winner is crowned. The AFC West is here. The Broncos, Chargers, Raiders, Chiefs. The AFC North is down below. So these are all the 16 people that won over here in the East. NFC East over here. NFC South is pretty stacked. NFC North and the NFC West. These are all. These are the 32 people left. Final score you got to put right here. This is pretty much uh, how is it going to go. Like I said, we start with the with the AFC East, man. Like I said, J Wall won the last time J Wall play. Uh, the last time J Wall played competitive Madden was I, I want to say two months ago. Well, that's an advantage that these other guys have. Ice was the Jets Club Series winner. He beat AKG. And uh, he's going to play J Wall in the first round. Then we got Blocky, and we block against Quan, who upset Carey to win Buffalo Bills. So we're going to have Blocky, who's the back-to-back -back Miami Dolphins Club Series champion, against Quan for in the first round. We're going to have Wesley Joe Rice, who once again hasn't played in two months, just like J Wall back when, when the Texas Club Series was popping. Then we got Nick is Beast, who actually beat Jet Steele. And we're going to talk about that game in a little bit. But Jess Steele actually had a 24-0 lead in the Jags, the Jaguars Club Series Championship. He had a 24-0 lead. And this guy, Nick is Beast, came back and won the game in overtime on a safety in overtime. 
so that's a crazy story. So he's riding a lot of momentum, and uh, he definitely uh, is feeling good to go ahead and get into this this final three or this final thirty two. This is definitely a big uh, big step for him. We got Nikel. I forget his last name. Nikel. I don't know what his mad name is. They didn't put his Twitter handle. They didn't put anything like that on the the uh, Madden League Ops. So we definitely um that's Nikel representing the Tennessee Titans. Spoto obviously the Colts. He won the Colts, so he's ready to go. Seventeen year old Spoto will play Nikel. Nick will play Wesley. That's I mean, this is the AFC South. Then we got Turbo Jeff man making an appearance, winning the Broncos Club. Congratulations to him. He will play Allen. Who I mean, Allen is probably one of the best players in the world right now. He beat he beat Problem to win the the Chargers Club Series. So he's definitely hot right now. Anytime you can beat Problem in a tournament, that's a big deal. Then we got Pavon, back-to-back Raiders Club ch- Club Series champion. He's going to play War Daddy, who uh, won the Chiefs. I haven't seen much from War Daddy. I don't know War Daddy. So we'll see what that's what he's got on the big stage. Congratulations to him for winning the Chiefs. Deliverance will play Joke. Another rematch from last year. This is a huge game. Once again, Deliverance hasn't played really in a long time, and Joke is fresh off playing, playing the game a lot, obviously, and um, that's going to be a good game to watch. I know Joke was disappointed last year and how he performed after winning the Browns Club Series, so hopefully he, he for him he can go ahead and uh, beat Deliverance this time, but that's definitely a first-round matchup that was going to be interested in watching. Then we got uh, I Love God and Crush. Crush, uh, congratulations to him for beating Prodigy versus the in the AFC, uh, whatchamacallit, for the Bengals club. He beat Prodigy, uh, Ultimate League member last year, so Crush probably, I would call that an upset. Not that, you know, anybody's anybody, but if you anybody that was in the Ultimate League last year, pretty uh, noteworthy that Crush got that win against I Love God uh, or H. Dot. This is one of Skimbo's old buddies, man, so... This guy's definitely on the up and coming with the Ravens here. So this is going to be a nice matchup. This is a sneaky little uh, division right here. Then we got the a- the NFC. We got Drenny versus Evil Low, man. Evil Low, he, he hit me on Twitter and said, man, your predictions really inspired me. It's definitely going to be uh, something to watch to see if he can keep playing like he was a couple years ago. Evil Low's always played a lot of men, but he's definitely up against Drenny, who's, I mean, Drenny's an elite man and player. And uh, he won. He won the Dallas Club Series pretty easily, and so we'll see what happens there. And then we got Figgy versus Ghost. It's a rematch from last year. They played in the NFC East Finals last year. Figgy once again, like Jay Wall, like uh, Wesley, like who else was on here? That's it. Wesley and Jay Wall are the only ones that played two months ago. Just like Figgy. So I don't know how much that is an advantage or disadvantage. And we also have these guys on stream from two months ago. But he'll play Ghost, and we'll see how that goes. Honestly, I'm looking forward to a Journey matchup versus Ghost. If Ghost can get by Figgy and Journey gets by Evil Low, that's going to be a, a high a high price game right there, Ghost and Journey. But uh, here we go. And we got Mo versus Clef is probably the number one matchup in the first round by far. I mean, it's about Mo, a belt winner. Like I've said a million times, Mo is one of the top five-man players of all time. And for him to go up against Clef in the first round is crazy. Clef is, is really hot. I mean, Clef is really, he really wants to prove himself. Obviously, y'all all watch Clef play. All the gambles, all the money games and stuff like that. He's really definitely uh, on the verge of becoming something great. And Mo obviously already is something great. So this is the best matchup in the first round. One that, I mean, I've been going back and forth in my mind on who I'm going to pick. Then we got Manu, who back-to-back Panthers Club Series champion. Man, Manu is probably one of the best man players that hasn't really made a run in a live event, hasn't made a real live event, and, and he's probably the best man player that hasn't been there. And a lot of people, he plays with a lot of people, puts a lot of time in the game. And then the underrated king, man, I, I don't know much about the underrated king, but he beat Safa, and he, I heard he got two kicks blocked and still beat Safa. So that's pretty crazy. So we'll see what happens there. I expect Manu to win that, and then Mo and Clef. This is three really good players right here. I mean, much much like up top with Journey, Figgy, and Ghost, Mo, Clef, and Manu. That's that's I mean that's the tough six. Out of these eight, and then you have Evil Low and King. I mean this this eight right here is probably over the whole sixteen over here on the west or on the AFC. Then we go down to the bottom. We got Drag Grandpa Drag against Strafe and two old veterans. Man, just going at it in the first round. 
Once again, Strafen, uh, not as far back as Wesley and J Wall, but Strafen was not in Vegas, did not play at that, you know, this quickly, this quick of a turnaround. So, I mean, you got to give the advantage most of the time to people that have been playing a lot recently. And, you know, Dre's just won the, the Packers club, so he's definitely been playing a lot. But he's playing straight and definitely two veterans, man. And then we got Canes. Who beat my man Proof? It wasn't close. I talked to Proof this morning. He said, "I just don't know. I don't know what happened." So it was Kane's. Kane's definitely playing good, playing well against McKinley, who upset my guy Bugs. So I mean, in the perfect world, I wanted Proof versus Bugs right here, but it did not go well. So we have Kane's versus McKinley. McKinley's another one man that's really been grinding man a lot, on the verge of really popping up in one of these tournaments. And obviously, you guys know Kane's is tough, man. So Kane's definitely a. Uh, is looking forward to, I mean, I, I would say Kings is probably the favorite to come out of this NFC North. But I said Dragon, straight from the tough. McKinley's definitely always been a little bit different than everybody else, man. He's not going to run the bunch and the 335 odd or all the, the meta stuff. He's going to be a little bit different. And sometimes that can really be to an advantage. And McKinley used that to get through the Detroit Lions Club Series. Then we go to the NFC West, man. Nene beating Little Man to win the Rams Club Series. This is another guy that's really been around playing Madden a lot. And for him to go ahead and win a club, I'm really happy for him. And we'll see what he can do from here on out. T. Davis was the first club series. This I swear this was in September the last time he played. Had to be at least three months ago. But he's you know he plays with the EMB guys and everything. He's really going to be labbed up pretty good. And he'll be ready to go. And then we got Kiv. Um, Kiv is the Madden 18 champion. He won the last tournament that was on. Salary cap. Kiv has always been a pretty good salary cap uh, player. Obviously, shoot, Kiv is an elite man player. And they play Suspect, Baby Kane, so, or Older Kane, shit. So the Powell brothers are here. Suspect beat one to get there. This is another sneaky first-round matchup. I think Suspect is good. Obviously, Kiv is elite. So, I mean, this I, this alone is a sneaky good NFC West. Yeah, not. I mean, really looking at it, the NFC is substantially better than the AFC. That, that's pretty crazy to me. But we'll see how it goes, man. And that's, uh, this is the 32. Yeah, I just, I mean, but at the same time as Madden 18, man, if you put the time in this game, a lot of these guys, obviously there's a lot of names over here on the right that we recognize. And I mean, I, I recognize every name on the right. I, I don't really know the underrated King. I don't really know him, but I recognize every other name on the left. I don't really know Quan. I don't know Nikel. I don't know Nick is beast. I've never played turbo Jeff. Or War Daddy. There's a lot of PS4 dudes over here. I, I don't. Oh, uh, the AFC is definitely top to bottom. Is kind of kind of weak. But the NFC is definitely where the strength is. It's definitely looking strong. But man, this whole tournament's looking really strong. Man, you know it's really uh, it's gonna be a tight battle. I, I'm gonna be interested to see who comes out of the, the NFC East and the NFC West, man. And down here, I mean. You could potentially look at the final four of Kiv, Canes, Moe, and, and Drini. I mean, that's pretty crazy. Over here, you could potentially be looking at Jay Wall, uh, Joe Rice, Allen, and Joke. That that would be that'd be a tough four too. I think regardless of how it goes, man, the, the final four, we can agree on that. The final four out of this or the final eight, that's gonna be pretty crazy, one way or the other, chat. I think that's pretty much no, J Wall and Ice don't have a bye. This ain't a bye, goes. I, don't, I think this is one of the better first round games. Ice and J Wall. I think that's a decent first round game. And Allen and Turbo Jeff is a decent little game. I mean, I, I mean, I, Allen is Allen is Allen. Yeah, but now what we're gonna do? Obviously, like I said, man, I'm gonna put this this graphic right here. I made. You guys have no idea how long I spent making this damn graphic yesterday. But I definitely made this. Uh, I made this graphic yesterday, and honestly, Deliverance and Joke is a good first round game. Chat, y'all, y'all tripping if Joke versus Deliverance isn't one of the, one of them. Like in in the first round of AFC, that might be the number one game I want to watch. Joke and Deliverance. That's gonna be a battle. If I'm lying, I'm dying. No, but for real, I'm gonna put this graphic on Twitter. I want to give you guys the opportunity to go ahead and I have a screenshot it, put some, I mean, put some marks, like just come up here. This is on Photoshop. I mean, obviously everybody don't have Photoshop, 
but just come up here and put put a uh, put a put some stuff like this. You can just put a B, put a B, things like that, man, and just mark this thing however you want to. You know what I mean? And that's that's what I'm gonna want you guys to do. And that way we can find out. You know, like I said, I'm gonna give away a point for every game you get right is a point. So if you get Jay Wall and he wins, that's one point. If you get blocking and he loses, you still just have one point. Wesley wins, okay, now you have two points, and so on and so forth. What I want you to do is screenshot your 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 bracket. However you fill it out, I want you to screenshot it, man. And if you screenshot it, I want you to post it underneath that, you know, the uh underneath the tweet. That's how I'm gonna go back and look at who won. Like I said. $200 cash, $100 of um, Players Lounge money. Also, we're going to give away a Todd Gurley uh, Team of the Year for Xbox. And we're going to give away $50 in place. If you're PlayStation 4, I'll give you $50 Microsoft points or whatever it is to um, go ahead and, and buy your own packs or whatever. So, And then also, $50 needed gaming for anybody in the top four, man. You can buy anything you want in the store for $50, a hoodie, a t-shirt, whatever it may be. If you don't already have a hoodie, you guys should all have hoodies, especially we are Madden hoodies. So, like I said, man, next week we're going to go over everybody. My picks, hopefully we can get some of y'all in here that aren't in the tournaments. You know what I'm saying? Then we'll go ahead and make some picks. And see who y'all want to pick. I'm not going to pick until next week. So you guys got to pick your own picks. Make your own decisions. Figure out who you think is going to win. Because uh, I know who I like. Actually, some of these games I really don't know who I like. I don't know when the uh, the Madden streams are going to be. I don't know what when they're supposed to happen. Or when like the the Seahawks and the... Uh, Kid won the Seahawks. Ghost won the Redskins. Ice won the Jets. What was the other one we weren't supposed to see? Oh, Nene won the Rams. And uh, that's four. I swear it's one more. Oh, suspect won the 49ers. Yeah. So if you guys, if you guys didn't know that, now you know. But anyway, I don't know when they're gonna be. And honestly, what's crazy about this is what a huge disadvantage for these kids that uh <laughs> that are gonna have their game stream. And a chat, help me out. Is this, is like ghost stream and kid stream gonna be this week? When are they supposed to show that shit? I think I help you out. I really don't know. These guys know when it's going to happen. I don't know. The, and the best was crazy to me. So they're going to have a stream today of Kiv's, Kiv's game, right? Now you have a guy like Clef or Mo or Journey. These guys aren't going to be on stream. But they're going to throw Kiv's shit on stream right away. Now, I don't think EA understands how big a disadvantage it is to have your game streamed. Because I'll be real, I'm sitting here trying to make picks. And, and, like, I'm going over the bracket yesterday. And I'm trying to make picks. What's crazy to me is, is like, okay. I, and when I look at these games, obviously I know these players. I know these names. I know who they are. But for me to make picks, I don't know how they're playing. I don't know, like, all right, this guy's playing well. This guy's really hot. Damn, he had a new blitz. Because I don't see them play. And that's what's really crazy to me is that, you know, how can you stream somebody's game and these other people have no game film or anything? And Ghost, you're lying. All you guys care. I don't want to be on stream. Because honestly, for any good man player, it's a big deal if you're on stream, especially if you have anything, man. Like, it's a crazy deal to me that they can stream half of these games and not the other half. At least, like, show... I, that's crazy. It's a, so in other words, it's a crazy disadvantage, especially now. But even for like, even like Jay Wall and Wesley who played on stream months ago, their game could have changed completely. Whatever the hell Kiv is doing this week to win this series and, and Suspect is doing this week, they are doing the same shit in a week. It's not changing that much. You know, and that's, cr that's crazy to me that, I, I don't know. I'd be upset if I was, if I was Kiv, if I was in Ghosts. I'd be upset. And I'll tell you this. Joke is over here quiet as a motherfucker. But I'll tell you this, chat. If Joke was one of the groups that was streaming and, and War Daddy and Pavan, all these guys weren't streamed, he'd be going crazy. I'll tell you that right now. He would be. But it's definitely it's definitely different that you guys can uh, 
We'll see who can overcome that. Like I said, I don't I don't even know what happens. I really don't know what happens, uh how everybody's playing. I know the names, but I don't know how everybody's playing. But like I said, man, I'm gonna put this bracket on Twitter. And I want you guys to copy it, screenshot it, whatever it may be, fill it out, repost it on the thread. Like I said, over three hundred and fifty dollars worth of shit going for the winner. Fifty dollars for everybody in the final four. I really want to make we can do this every year when the clubs come and really see how you guys fare. You know, we everybody people do this all the time. What's gonna call it? We do this all the time. Every year the club series goes, man. I, we have a lot of fun doing this with NCA, the NCA bracket. Let's go ahead and do it for the Madden Club Series Championship. Like I said, I gotta save this. I'm gonna save this right now. Save. Boom, JPEG. Boom. No, it's no entry fee. It's free. Everybody come fill it out, man. Free ninety nine. Yeah, people getting streamed. Uh, some people getting streamed, some people not. It's pretty damn crazy. All right, let's put this in here. Boom. But I said, who's who? You guys, who's the early pick? I know it's a lot of y'all in the chat that are uh, in the shit. So, but who do y'all who y'all think is the early favorite to go ahead and win this? That's what I want to know. A lot of y'all in the chat that playing this. Y'all like Journey? Um, I said I told Journey I can't root for him because of the Cowboys, man. Or Allen joke maybe ice versus joke journey versus Kib is the top four. How, but this crimson, this is my point. What what does it matter? What side is, is what side is is tougher? Because at the end of the day, they all have to play each other. I want to make sure that this is the right one. Yeah, figgy versus close. All right. I said one point for every correct game. The winner gets two hundred dollars cash, hundred dollars players lounge, money, team of the year top girly. Boom. That's the thing. Like, I, honestly, I, the person that comes out of the what's gonna call it? Oh shit! The capping. Here it is, chat.
Mo and J Wall. This is a matchup we might need. Say, come on, man. J Wall, J Wall is thirteen, bro. He don't have a lot of money. See, that's crazy. Amazing, yeah. I like, I do like the winner of Mo and Clef. I, I think that's the best game in the first half. In the first round, I think that the winner of that game is really going to make a run. And but like I said, whoever comes out of the NFC East is going to be strapped up too. You know, but it's definitely going to be fun, man. So shit, I'm ready to watch. I don't know if you guys are ready to watch. Like I said, who do you guys like? YouTube, please tell me below who do you like. You seen the bracket? I'm going to copy the tweet in the description and make sure you guys fill out your bracket, put it below. Chance to win a couple dollars. I know it's nothing crazy, but it's all out of my pocket and Players Lounge. So I appreciate you guys really participating. Make your picks. It's a free entry, man. So at the end of the day, it's well, one thing about it, man. You can fill out your bracket. You can watch along. It's going to make it more entertaining, make it more uh, rewarding for you guys to go ahead and watch it, man. But that's how it goes, man. As we see all the Club Series goons in the chat going at it, we see Drenny, we see Mo. And one thing, I'm going to tell you, another guy, uh, guys, another thing about this, man. And I told Drenny this. I don't want anybody that doesn't have a belt winning, man. I'm really just rooting for belt winners, honestly. So I got four people I'm rooting for. Kiv, Mo, Ghost, and Drenny. I don't want any more people in the belt gang. That uh, That's cool. It, once once Journey got a belt and, and Kiv got a belt, it kind of became a little bit less cool. But if more people keep getting belts, I mean, I really it's really going to diminish the fact of belts for real. But anyway, like I said, man, yeah, figure my bad, B. I, I I really just don't want no new belts, like for real. Only only belt gang. Once you're in the brotherhood, you really just got to root for the for the belt gangs. That's how I feel. Nah, somebody can get two. I don't care about that shit no more. One skimbo got two, but I don't care about that shit no more. I don't want nobody else. It's bad enough Stiff got a belt. A stiff got a fucking belt, man. That shit is rough. Like I said, man, that's just... Yeah, belt's under 50,000. I, I kind of agree. That's why I said skimbo really only got one belt. Like, who the hell counts regs as a belt? When, do, when does that become a belt we count? <laughs> skimbo really has, like, one belt. No, Ghost, I can't lie. When Ghost won a belt, that shit went down. Bitches stopped caring about the belt once Ghost won. They're like, ooh, you got a man belt? Ooh, that guy Ghost has one too. Ooh, you're not cool anymore. No, but for real, man, this was Neither Podcast, episode 14. I appreciate all you guys watching the video, man. Please fill out your bracket, man. Get it done. Fill out a bracket. is a free chance to win free money. Team of the year, Ty Gurley. Also, comment below, man, who you think is going to win. What's the best first-round matchup that you want to see in the Madden Club Series, man?